It's official. It's that time of year. The smell of pumpkin spice is in the air. Yes, it's time for spooky tales of supply and demand. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Another scary episode of IBF On Demand. I'm your Crip Keeper and host, Eric Wilson. You can find me at Eric at IBF.org. That's Eric at IBF.org. Thanks for the follows and subscribes. Follow me on LinkedIn, YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, and once again, special thank you to Arkiva, driving business transformation by solving what others cannot. Thank you, Arkiva. Have you ever experienced the panic of forecasts gone terribly wrong, or the dread of watching inventory build up. Today, we're diving into the chilly and scary tales that haunt the world of supply chain and demand planning. From data disasters to forecasting nightmares, those stories will remind you that in our profession, even the smallest missteps can lead to monstrous consequences. So brace yourself for supply chain horror stories. That's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to go through a few of my favorite stories and stories that you guys have submitted as well. With Halloween right around the corner, I am decided to get a little bit into the spirit and do a special horror-themed podcast episode. But instead of ghosts and goblins and all those traditional, I wanted to dive into something even more scarier. The nightmare SNOP cycle. It's been haunted by ghost reports and recurring scary data errors or battling with manufacturing gremlins and confronting planning werewolves. So to really get some really good stories, stories I reached out to you, the audience, and you did not disappoint. I actually sent out an email. I posted on our special LinkedIn channel. By the way, check out our LinkedIn IBF On Demand channel if you already have not. There's a special channel. There's content only there. So check out that content. Matter of fact, there's going to be some of the stories you're only going to see on our IBF On Demand LinkedIn channel. So check that out. You can find it through my profile or Put in IBF On Demand and find that channel as well. So check out that page. Like that page. I want to grow that content there as well. And I said there's going to be content only available there for this season. I said, I reached out and got some good content. I mean, content like, you know, the CFO saying, can we talk about this quarter, how it will end in an SNOP meeting? Or the supply planner saying, talking about the hard frozen zone. They're not going to be able to do anything else. in, Or the demand planner saying, well, they told me to match the budget or this is what sales said. The sales request for large orders from a new client or promotion, procurement buying more or less than the forecasted due to minimum order quantities. Executives' lack of understanding on longer lead times should not equal more inventory. Trust me, I've been on, I've heard that one. Customers ordering more than they de- needed because of allocation. Well, their order because they're on allocation, they order extra, even though they know they're going to cancel it, just so they can try to get first in line. Dividing by actuals or forecast or forecast accuracy, be, whichever one's going to be better. I've seen that happen as well. Or an ERP implementation that's supposed to only take two years and still talking about it seven years later. Yes, there's lots of tales and we're going to go through just a few of them. My first story is the tale of the ghost of history past. In this story, someone created a system for forecasting using five long years of weekly sales history 
to be able to truly understand the intricate seasonality that existed in this business. So he loaded up five years of weekly history and everything was working fine. They were seeing the nuances of week-to-week planning and when the spikes were going to occur. And it took all this history and planned out for the next year what was going to happen. Everything was going fine until that one day, that one chilly day of January 1st. As the system progressed through the year, each week it added a new week and we planned their history and the next week it would plan a new week was added on understanding that data would eventually become an issue with this planning homegrown planning system January 1st at the beginning of a new calendar year it purged the last calendar year's worth of history so in essence what it did was at the beginning of a new calendar year, it would chop off an entire year's worth of history and then replan based on the new four years worth of data. What happened after that was a drastic change of all the new forecasts going forward, causing confusion, chaos among production planners and manufacturing, trying to understand while magically In this new year, everything had changed. The forecast had suddenly become unpredictable, causing large shifts in mix and demand that production was trying to figure out why and catch up. This eerie shift in numbers. Unfortunately, they went back to try to understand what was happening, but the guy who originally created the code just 10 months prior had moved on and was no longer with the company. The code so embedded into their daily planning and so mysterious that nobody could unravel and understand in the organization. Despite op- opportunity, uh, options and looking into it and, 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 and trying to figure it out, nobody could figure out what was happening. The guy disappeared, leaving behind this cursed code. And instead of trying to recreate something at this point, life became so dependent at this organization that this nightmare continued, not only for the next year, but for three more years, they continued every January 1st, preparing for this chaos that happened during the entire month as they restructured all their planning and tried to manipulate number numbers because they couldn't break the spell. Before finally a new system was introduced four years after this original code was created, but the memory of this twisted prediction still haunts them and lives to this day. My next tale is the soup that overflowed. It was a company, a soup company, that launched a promotion. I'm not going to mention their name. They have a red and white label, so I'm not going to mention who they were. They launched this promotion of 10 cans for $10, a 10 for 10 promotion. Not only did it sound good, but when it reached The grocery store aisles, it was a huge success. The operations team, at the same time, was preparing for what they called soup season. Yes, there is a soup season. There is a three months out of every year where soup sales have a natural seasonality and they sell substantially more. This promotion ran just prior to soup season to help build market awareness and to help promote their soup prior to a time when sales were generally a little bit lower. So the soup promotion hit. At the same time, operation geared up for the pending soup season that was coming. 
forecast teams all adjusted their forecast for what they saw as normal seasonality, and they did add in the lift. They wasn't totally in the dark because that's a horror story in itself. They were aware that this promotion was going to occur, so they added in the lift, and then they were prepared for the pending season that was to come. At this time, everyone was doing their due diligence, prepping, building extra inventory, preparing the forecast, adding lift for promotion, adding lift for seasonality, marketing, celebrating their wins, having their party, saying how great they were for the promotion that was seeing this great response from the consumer. Everyone was unaware for what was about to happen next. The problem was that soup is a pantry item. Soup to a consumer has a long shelf life. And they bought extra. They didn't only bought extra. They bought more than what they would have bought before. And now buying at an even discounted price. So the consumer was happy they were saving money. And buying 10, 20 cans of soup and loading up their pantry just prior to soup season. The company was unprepared for soup season. With warehouses now overflowing and production ramping up, they prepared not only because they saw this lift, but they were trying to now make up for all the extra soup that they had just sold, thinking they were going to have that much more sales now that soup season was coming. So forecasting, they had the lift, saw extra, and planned that extra lift now for the pending seasonality. So on top of the seasonality they had, they added additional lift. Operation, catching themselves off guard for this sale that was happening better than what they anticipated, started not only building extra, but built extra then to the forecast that they had coming in because they didn't want to get caught behind as well. So they added additional safety stock. As I said, thinking everything was properly prepared for soup season, they had extra inventory busting at the seams. Warehouses now overflowing into extra space and production still building everything they could with anticipation of what was going to come. But what did come? You probably guessed it. This promotion led to a decrease in sales during the time they thought sales was going to increase. Sales was actually under what they had in prior years and under if you even took the seasonality out. So not only were sales lower, they were a lot lower. At the same time, forecast was forecasting higher and production was going to produce even more than that. This led to unused cans with a shelf life. It used to excess inventory. They had to either decide to discount again after soup season or be able to scrap. It caused sales were at a discounted price. Production ran over time. Forecast was missed the mark entirely. All because we wanted to have a promotion that we thought and celebrated as a win. So beware, dear listeners. Sometimes success does come at a price. One measures of expired canned soup can be another one's victory. The next story is a forecasting nightmare. Five years of history to create a rolling forecast based on sales, regions, customers, and items. There was a lot of effort that went into it to understand what regions were had which customers and sales teams were 
strategically placed in different regions and items were uh, planned every month based on the capability of reconciling the statistical forecast to what sales were seeing, customers were ordering, regions were planning, reconciling this not only at a monthly but then to a weekly level, being able to reconcile this efficiently and effectively. Having this top-down and bottom-up approach where you could understand which items were sold where and how regions and different areas were structured based on sales teams. It worked beautifully. And then one day, company underwent changes. Luckily, this did not impact the planner. They were maybe, you know, had a different, you know, dotted line of who they reported to, but things were unaffected to this planner. They maintained their role, maintained their responsibility of reconciliation of these two plans on a weekly basis. Yeah, there was a new VP of sales, but didn't impact the demand planner. Didn't impact their role in what they did on a weekly basis. Or did it? What happened was this new system then was reconfigured based on this new VP of sales. Because this new VP of sales wanted to restructure their team. They brought in some new director of sales as well, and they got rid of some of the old team as well. So the sales team did dramatically change. And with this dramatic change, they restructured the regions that the sales teams operated in to make it more equitable for the new teams and where we saw growth and where they saw decline in regions and be able to restructure the new sales team. So the system now, as they came in on a Monday morning, showed all different regions with new sales reps that had different new proportions of customers and different proportions of items that no longer matched the old system. So as the old system generated a forecast based on historic sales that have been cleansed and monitored and cultivated for five years to be able to generate a statistical forecast based on what it thought the items, sales, and regions were, no longer matched the new output that sales, customers were now structured into. Nothing matched. The reconciliation started and absolutely nothing matched. The statistical outputs based on what the old regions were no longer matched the new regions of what they were planning for and what they said it was. There was no way to do reconciliation. What happened was was hours and literally overnights of trying to manipulate the data and try to understand how these matched. There was a manual realignment of the customers, percentages of items, trying to reconfigure this percentage was here and this percentage was there. The process then continued for over a half a year, every week manually doing this process until the system could be realigned and we started to develop historic sales within the new regions. Ultimately, what happened, most of the history was pretty much thrown away, making a lot of the statistical forecasting obsolete and going with purely a bottoms-up sales forecast for almost the next year until they generated history that could start generating statistical forecasts that they could reconcile again, forecasting dropped by 20, 30 points of accuracy during this time. And the amount of time literally doubled or tripled went into trying to reconcile the bottoms up to the top down. All because sales regions rearranged based on what they thought was good for them, 
not considering the consequences of other planning that happened as well. So be careful when you realign. You never know who you may be impacting. This next story is the Bermuda Triangle of Orders. This story begins with weekly plans being reviewed and a consensus forecast being created. This was all part of this weekly SNOE process, sales and operations meeting that happened efficiently and effectively every Tuesday at 2 o'clock, where they reviewed the forecast and the production plans and they reconciled where there was anomalies they were seeing based on what the forecast was and what the new orders and anticipated demand was going to be. They use standard forecast KPIs to be able to understand this is what they predicted and this is what they were seeing. And what they were seeing was this blend of kind of a half forecast and half orders and understanding what they saw as far as committed orders of when they were going to ship and when they had forecast and when they expected to ship. Yes, part of the nightmare itself was Everything was operating off of invoice and shipments. But based on system limitations, that is what they had to do. They really had to forecast what was going to be shipped. And they utilized the best they could of what was orders of when the committed dates were going to be shipped. So they were using the best they could as far as committed dates to be shipped. And a combination of forecasted shipments and these orders with anticipated ship dates on it. And it was this cold, rainy afternoon, most likely probably in Portland, Oregon, because it was cold and rainy in the in the winter. But there was this cold, rainy afternoon. And they went to their SNO meeting and they had their forecast of what they thought. And then all of a sudden this led to panic and major adjustments to the plans because everything wasn't matching what they anticipated. Orders they thought were going to be there were gone. Orders they never dreamed of were now showing up. Forecast was completely off of what they anticipated was going to be for this week and the weeks to pursuing. So everything was off. The order bank overflowed and, and they had this this over order bank that they never saw before. So automatically, panic went through the whole SNO e meeting, and they tried to figure out how we're going to make this production. They are going to add over time. What are we going to do? And they tried to refigure out the plan. And the normal forty-minute meeting went on for two hours plus, trying to understand these new demand and how they were going to react to it. It was just a few days later, as all the operational plans were now in place, that magically overnight, a lot of this demand was gone. The demand just magically disappeared. Orders that were, were, were overflowing were now down to normal levels, back to what they anticipated just days prior. At the same time, if action have already went into place to try to add all this new demand, what were they going to do? Quickly, they relay an emergency meeting. They had relay their numbers. They relay their plan and adjusted the numbers back down to what they thought were reasonable, assuming it was just a one-time glitch in the system. The next Tuesday showed up, and once again, another cold afternoon. Rain hit the window as they went in opening up their laptops, opening up the order bank, only to see, once again, all these orders, once again, back in, within lead time, within the frozen zone, within the slushy zone, twice the order bank they were there just a week prior. New sales and back orders, galore. Once again, quickly, we need to react. We understand if this is this is real. We don't have time to try to figure things out. We just have to make these dates because we're going to miss all these shipments. We're going to add in extra time over the next two days. And then sure enough, 
You guessed it, two days later, everything magically disappeared and was back to the exact way it was. What could be plaguing this? It truly was a Bermuda Triangle of Orders. As they continued to look through the process, they got down to a customer service rep. It turns out the field that we're drawing on, this customer service rep, anybody actually could manipulate. So as orders would get in, they would go in and then put the order in and then go back to the order and reset the date out to when they thought you could deliver. Based on when there was too many orders, to, we were over capacity, they would reset the order beyond a slushy zone to when they thought you could deliver. As customers wanted it, then they would have to push it back and move orders around. So they spent most of their days, this customer service rep was changing orders back and forth of where it was. To make things worse, they discovered something else that was always causing problems, but now it was amplified. It turns out when the system was first created, it was a policy put in place to clean up past back orders because they would just stay on the book. You'd never have a back order that was more than 30 days. So it would automatically delete back orders over 30 days. Well, the problem this company was having is because of COVID and because of long lead times, they were having quite a few back orders. So all these back orders now were extending beyond 30 to 45 to 60 days. So they were having all these back orders were dropping off. And you guessed it, customer service would then have to go back in, recreate a brand new order, and then set a date that was then being utilized as the shipment date for the order that everybody was planning off of. So we had customer service restructuring dates and these phantom orders dropping off. Wednesdays, they were dropping off and then getting re-put in on a Thursday or Friday. So as we went in on Tuesday morning, a Tuesday afternoon meeting, everything was out of control. But because that was what the condition we were seeing. As we came back just 24 hours, 48 hours later, most of, a lot of those had dropped off. And then they were being put back in on that Friday, Thursday afternoon, Friday, and Monday, a lot of those orders being put back in. It took a lot of understanding the root cause and understanding the fix to be able to, to solve for this problem in the future and finding out, guess what? There were orders that needed to be filled. They did need to run overtime. But also determining that root cause figured out that over half of the forecast error that they've been reporting for months were caused by the issues that were in place of orders dropping off, orders being placed, and nothing to do with the process and statistical model itself. So it just goes to show you, even during the scariest times, the forecast isn't always to blame. Well, that's a wrap. I'm going to go pick out my Halloween costume. I'm thinking I'm going as a demand planner. I might have an old outfit that still fits. My name is Eric. You can find me at eric at ibf.org. That's eric at ibf.org. Thanks to Arkiva, not so scary, and driving business transformation by solving what others cannot. Thank you, Arkiva. Thank you, IBF. Uh, check out ibf.org for more things you can do to get not scary in what you do every day. Check out my book, Predictive, Anal I mean, Predictive Analytics for Business Forecasting, my first book, but my latest book, Practical Guide for Sales and Operations Planning, SNOP IVP. Great book, flying off the shelf. And remember, this Halloween, before you dive into this candy this year, don't forget, wash your hands. <laughs>